I'm so blessed to share communion with you today. I'm working again from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, a one-year communion devotional. This is week 30, Why Do You Want to Be Healed? That's a good question. As we partake of communion today, we marvel at the ministry of Jesus. He preached, he taught, and he healed. The Gospels are replete with healings, God's calling card for the lost and hurting. Of course, healing has been handed and transmitted to us through the New Covenant. In fact, faith for healing comes through our study of the Scriptures and hearing the Word of God. As we search the Scriptures, we discover that it is God's will to heal. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes when our ears are open to hear the word, the rhema of God. See, the rhema of God is the word that comes alive to you. When the word of God ignites in your heart, you are fully persuaded that God is able and willing to perform what he promised. Once you are settled in this truth, you will have steadfast faith to be healed. Your faith will be based on a revelation of what God has already done for you. You'll walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham. He had circumstances that contradicted the fulfillment of God's promise. They rendered them impossible. However, Abraham refined his focus with the lens of God's promise to him. He believed God's word in spite of the circumstances, and he became according to that which was spoken. Listen to Romans 4, 18 through 21, the Message Bible. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's dec decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he had said. So it's essential that you search the scriptures and receive them not as the word of men, but as they are in truth, the word of God. The word will work effectively in you and you'll be brought into harmony with the mind of God. I believe that it's also important to ask yourself a question. Why do I want to be healed? We need to allow the Word of God to refine our motives as well. God looks at the life and activities we visualize after we're healed. <laughs> we'll look at three examples of people who converted their healing into capital for the kingdom of God. Number one, Peter's mother-in-law. Jesus had just cast an evil spirit out of a man, and his fame spread around the region. Now Luke 4, 38 through 39, King James Version. And he rose out of the synagogue and entered Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Peter's mother-in-law models the purest motivation for healing. When her great fever left her in response to Jesus' command, her great fever fervor took over. She used her newfound strength and health to minister to Jesus and the disciples. We should want to be healed so we can serve our fellow man. Sickness is a hindrance to this lofty endeavor. Our desire to be healed shouldn't merely focus on our relief from the torment of sickness and disease. We should be focused on the people who are waiting to be helped by us down the path of our obedience. Sickness is a thief that steals our energy and delays our purpose. God has provided healing for us through the new covenant so that we can be comforters for others and not just comfortable ourselves. Number two, Bartimaeus. Jesus had just removed the rattles and pacifiers from the mouths of the disciples who exposed their desire to be served rather than to serve. He went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude. Along the way, a blind man named Bartimaeus sat by the wayside begging. He heard that Jesus was passing by, and he cried out to Jesus, asking for mercy from him. Now, people warned him to be quiet, but he would not be denied. <laughs> he cried out again for mercy, and he got the attention of the master. The Bible says that Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Bartimaeus threw aside his garment, the garment of a beggar, and came to Jesus 
the Lord asked him an unusual question. Mark 10, 51. Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. So why did Jesus ask him this, this question? He asked this question because Bartimaeus was not only on the road, he was at the crossroad. He could have asked for money to continue his life as a beggar. However, he had decided that the garment of the beggar no longer fit his desire. He had also made a decision about his motive for healing. We should imitate him in this matter. Mark 10, 52. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Bartimaeus followed Jesus on the road after he was healed. He accompanied Jesus as a disciple. Now, I like what another translation says about this. It's Mark 10, 52, out of the heart of Paul. Jesus said, now fulfill your destiny. Your trust has made you a whole person. At that instant, he began to see, and he followed Jesus, fulfilling his destiny. Our motive for healing should be to follow Jesus as a disciple, to fulfill our destiny. I have one more example of a person who responded to his healing with the right actions. Number three, the man at the gate called Beautiful. He was a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb. They carried him daily to the gate of the temple to ask alms of those who entered into the temple. So he saw Peter and John approaching the temple and asked for alms. Peter healed the man by telling him to rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Peter took him by the hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now the next verse reveals his response to the great healing he experienced. Acts 3.8 And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. The lame man spent his time outside of the temple, but once he was healed, he went into the temple and praised God. Before God heals us, we need to have our motive established. We want to be healed so we can serve in the house of God and praise God for his goodness. I suffered a severe injury in December of 2010. I damaged my skull and crushed my eye socket. On New Year's Eve, we pray for people every year. In 2010, I had to sit and watch others pray for people. It was difficult for me because I loved to serve and pray for people on New Year's Eve. I experienced a miraculous and speedy recovery from the injury, and I can now praise God without hindrance, and I can pray for people and do the work of the ministry. This is what fulfills me, this is my destiny. I'm following Jesus on the road. So why do you wanna be healed? Healing is God's established will for you. Only you can establish your motive for wanting to be healed. As we partake of communion, if you need healing in your body, settle it first with the word of God that it is his will to heal you, then examine yourself to test and refine your motives. Commit yourself to minister to others, to follow Jesus as his disciple, and to praise God with your life and with your commitment to your local church. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for the communion elements, God, and we know, Father, in our hearts that they represent the, the shedding of your blood that remitted our sins and the sacrifice of your body, which was uh, broken for our healing. So God, we establish ourselves, God, in that truth by claiming our healing today. And we thank you, God, that we can go forth and fulfill our destiny and serve in the local church and serve others as we see in the Bible today. In the name of Jesus, let's partake together.